Okay, so I have Unity open now, and you can see I have a very simple scene set up, and I've used the assets from the Space Shooter tutorial, uh, which you can get for free from the Asset Store if you wanted to follow along exactly. Don't feel any particular need to, though. Uh, and so what I have is a spaceship that will represent our player, and for now I've just added a few uh, asteroids around just to give us a sense of motion so that we can actually see uh, that our scripts are working the way we intend. And the first thing I want to do is to add a rigid body so that we can actually apply some physics to our player. So I will come over make sure our player is selected and I will select add component and I will search for rigid body and select that. Okay so with the rigid body now added what uh, I might want to do is if I look at my scene I can see that I want to move my spaceship in the Z direction and the X direction. I don't want it to move up and down in the scene. So I don't want it to move in the Y direction. I want to keep that set to zero. Uh, and so what I might do is firstly turn off gravity. I don't need it because gravity works in the Y direction so I don't need that. Uh, and just to be on the safe side I will freeze the position in the Y so that if I collide with anything later on I don't need to worry about that object pushing my, space, my player uh, out of line. So I'll keep it at zero and I'll freeze position on Y and we'll turn off gravity. And that's it, that's the rigid body set up. I'm not gonna worry about any of these other variables for now. Uh, and what I will do is go into our scripts folder and I will go right click, create new C sharp script and we'll call it player controller. And I will open that up in Visual Studio Okay, so I have my player controller scripts now open in Visual Studio. And the first thing I want to do is save a reference to that rigid body component we just created. So to do that, I will create a private rigid body and I will call it player RB. Uh, now I will need to uh, create the actual reference to this in the start uh, method. So I will go player RB is equal to get component from this object of type rigid body and that's all I need for that and the other thing I want to do is store a value for our force and so I will go private float and I will just call it force now I want to edit this in the inspector so I will use the serialize field tag um, now, when you're doing physics calculations, you don't want to use update. You almost always want to use fixed update. And the primary difference is that fixed update is called, whoop, what, what am I typing here? Private void fixed update. Uh, so the reason we use fixed, date, fixed update is that this is called at regular time intervals. So when you're doing physics calculations, these are done using a set time interval. Uh, if we used update, what it would mean is that our physics would be dependent on our frame rate. Uh, so if you have a lot going on in the scene and the frame rate changes, uh, it, it could result in strange sort of physics. Uh, so it's best to use fixed update so in our fixed update method, uh, the first thing we want to do is define the direction of the force. So we will define a new vector 3 called move dr. It's going to be equal to a new vector 3. And so what value do we want for the x and the y and the z? Well, it will depend on what the player presses. So for our x component, we will call on input dot get axes. And for X, we will set it to the horizontal uh, axes. And so what this does is this is set up by default to be the left and right arrow keys on the keyboard. And if it's the player presses the left key, this returns a value of negative one. If the player presses the right key, it's a positive one. And so well, what about the Y though? Uh, well, if you think about our, the way our scene is set up, we actually don't want the player to move in the Y direction. We really only want it to move in the 
x, which is our horizontal, and then the z, which is our vertical. So for our uh, y component of our direction, we want it to be 0. We never want it to be greater or less than 0. And our z component, well, that's going to be our vertical uh, axis. So we'll go input.getAxis, and we will call vertical. Now, there's one last thing that I want to do. And that is I want to make sure that this vector always has a magnitude of 1, regardless of which direction it is pointing. So what I will then do is normalize that vector. Uh, if the player were to press the up arrow key and the right arrow key at the same time, that would otherwise be a different value than if they had just pushed the up key. So that's why we use normalize, so that no matter which combination of left and right or up and down the player selects, this vector will always have a magnitude of 1. So now all we have to do is apply this uh, to our rigid body. So what we will do is call on rigid body and we'll go player rb dot add force. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different options. We can add a force of position, add a relative force, but for now we'll keep it basic and just add a basic force and so we need to supply a vector 3 that will represent the force we are adding uh, so we know that's going to be uh, our move direction so that's the direction of the force and our magnitude of that will be from our float that we defined earlier so we're going to multiply our direction vector by our value for the force and I'll close that off and that's all we need. Uh, if I go back to Unity and I add this to the player, so add component and we'll go player controller. And you can see that's come up and we'll add a force of just one for now. We'll see what that looks like. And I will hit play. Nothing happens yet, but if I push up on the arrow key, you can see the player starts to move up. If I push down, it will slow down and then start to move backwards. And of course, right will start to move towards the right. If I push left, start to move to the left. And then I push up again. And that's essentially all we need. Now I'm controlling the player with uh, the rigid body. OK, so that's pretty good. We can add a force to our spaceship, and we can change the value of the force in the inspector. Uh, but something we may want to do is change the type of force that we are applying. So to do that, I'm going to jump back into our move controller, or player controller script, and I'm going to create what is called a private force mode. We'll just call it force mode for now. And I'm going to want to edit this in the inspector as well. So I will again use the serialized field tag. And if I come back down to where we added our force, uh, what the method allows us is to supply our force mode. So I will supply that force mode that we defined. Oh, it'd be good if I spelled it right. No, nope. force mode. So again, back in Unity, we can see now under force mode, we have a drop down menu that has four options for us. The default is force, so if you didn't specify a force mode, then it would default to force. And that's how we had it before, uh, where it applies a continuous force that will accelerate the object, but it will depend on the mass of the object. So a heavier object will change its velocity uh, slower than a lighter object. So for a given, for the same value of force. Um, it's you know harder to push a heavy object than it is a lighter object. But if I wanted to apply a continuous force, but I didn't want the mass to affect it, I could go down to my drop down menu and I could hit acceleration. And if I hit play and I push up, you can see as before I'm and I push down again, uh, moving around. But this time it doesn't matter what the mass is. So I could set this to a thousand and it doesn't change uh, the rate at which the object accelerates. Still a continuous force, 
but then now the mass doesn't matter as opposed to before. So if I change this back to force, and if I hit the down arrow key, so I'm hitting the down arrow key and it's not moving at all. And that's just because I have the mass so high. If I change the mass back down to one, hit the down arrow key, and now we're back to uh, how it was moving before. So that's one option. You can uh, accelerate an object using its mass or not its mass. The other option is uh, you could use uh, impulse. Uh, now what this does is it accelerates an object uh, instantaneously, um, but it will also use the mass. So what does that mean? So if I apply a 10 Newton force, it will do that as if that force was applied in a single frame. So what we'll do is we'll just hit play, see what that looks like. If I hit up on the keyboard, you see it moves very quickly uh, and it immediately jumps up to that next velocity, uh, which is if you're, you know, creating a sort of cartoony game and you want some sort of unrealistic physics. Oh, I've lost the spaceship. Uh, that's not a bad option, but again, it does depend on the force. Uh, sorry, the mass. So if I hit play, see I'm moving around really quickly. But if I crank the mass up to a thousand or a hundred, come back. I lost my spaceship. Ah, oh, hang on. So we'll crank the, full, the mass up to 100, we'll leave it on impulse, and hit up on the keyboard. And you see now it's doing the same thing, but now it's much slower. Uh, if I wanted to ignore the mass, but still have an instantaneous uh, change in the velocity, I could use velocity change. And so now it's gonna go quite fast. So pushing up and down again, or left and right, uh, you can see it moves around uh, without, uh, regardless of having a heavy mass. So play around with these, decide what you know you want in your own game. It's really a, sort of up to you to determine what feel for the game you want. Uh, but that's essentially how you can use a rigid body to add a force uh, given an input from the player. Uh, thanks for watching.